This is the U.S. intelligence agency Mind Control. I know nothing about this guy. I I literally I I literally just like I assume he's like running Democrat like against like Joe Biden. Like I think that's what he's doing, but I also have no idea who he is, what his position is. I just <clears throat> put him on the other day, heard him talk, and I went, Jesus Christ, people like listen to that guy. I couldn't understand a word he said. I saw your tweet about that. <laughs> yet? Huh? Have you heard him talk? Uh, yeah, I have. I saw a, a snippet of this. Okay. You and I have um, significant differences. And, you know, just to level with you on this, like a lot of what you say, I really respond to. I think you're a very genuine person, but the across the board, um, whether you want to call it vaccine skepticism, nobody or here is genuine. Advocacy, which has been a central part of what you've been up to for the past number of years. For me personally, it's a it's an issue, and it's a it's a real sort of red line. And I know I'm not alone in that, especially running in a Democratic primary. There are going to be other millions of people like me who have similar concerns. So how how do you win them over? What's your message to people who think like I do? Well, but just tell me, um, tell me where you think I got it wrong. Well, I think you get it wrong when you draw a uh, correlation between the rise of things like autism and the introduction of vaccines when there isn't hard scientific evidence tying those things together. How do you I, know? Let, let me ask you this. Is this guy people, a straight up anti-vaxxer? People aren't going to vote for this, please. Come on. No. A guy who thinks vaccines cause autism? That's uh, pretty dumb. How do you know there's not hard scientific evidence? Well, because the one major study that purported to show that was retracted and the scientist who conducted it was, Correct. Um, you know, had to, was uh, what you're doing now, basically Chris fraudulently Paul. created. Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to get in a debate with you about this because you spent your life pulling out this study. I will tell you, I, I, tell let you, me just tell you, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds let me just tell you, I'm not I've listened to hours of interviews with you with an, yeah. an open mind and I'm not persuaded. Now, maybe I'm wrong. That's possible. I'll hold it out there. People can watch. I thought Megyn Kelly did a phenomenal interview with you that went through all these claims piece by piece by piece. I really encourage people to watch that whole exchange because we won't be able to do it justice here in the five minutes we have left. But there are going to be people like me who aren't persuaded and who see this as an issue. And the fact that it's been such a central part of your advocacy means I can't just sort of put it to the side and say, oh, well, I'll just ignore you know, this piece that's been really important to you in your life. So you're running in a Democratic primary. You have a lot of people who feel even more strongly than me who think that you know Dr. Fauci is a hero and all of these things. How are you going to persuade them? How are you going to reach them? And what is He's your definitely not a fucking hero. What the well, fuck kind of um, dumb fucking all, point I'm is that? No, 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 no. She's saying there's voters that think that. So how is he going to win those people over? Or she is. She's saying there's voters who say that he's a hero. How are you going to win them over when you think vaccines cause autism? It's a great question. Because it's like, you're not a, he, this is not, this is not a real candidate. This is a fucking press tour for him. Opinions about vaccines. What I say to people is show me where I got it wrong. Show me the, where. I... He's easier to understand when you fast forward him. Got my science wrong. I've written books about this. I, you know, I wrote a book about the link between dimerosal and autism that has, I think, 450 distilled scientific studies that confirm and validate that hypothesis and 1,400 references. And if I got something wrong, show me where it is. But I think people uh, have shown you where things are wrong, no, 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 but you don't want to hear it. Is because I've seen, you know, numerous fact checks. Dr. Vinay Prasad, who we, you know, really respect on uh, the COVID vaccine. He went through your interview with All In. He did a fact check. I mean, it's not... And then people I have, a fact check of Vinay, and you should read that. I will take a look at it. But, but uh, I don't think that it's fair to say Chris, nobody but, has ever pointed out anything that's been, that's uh, been I, wrong. Well, here's what I... Pe people complain about what I say. Mm. And I, again, I'm not leading on this issue, so people can either take it or leave it. But if you want to, you know, I... What you just said about me, that I'm sort of hard-headed and stubborn and just won't give in, you're wrong about that. If somebody shows me where I'm wrong, I'm going to correct it. And, you know, we have the demos probably the most robust fact-checking operation now in North America. Well, I have 350 PhDs. She just did. Physicians on, you know, CHD's uh, advisory board, including until recently, Luke Montanier won the Nobel Prize for, uh, for discovering the HIV virus. Chris Portier, who's the head of the National Toxicity Program at NIH, formerly, the, probably the top, top toxicologist in America. And if I were saying things that were scientifically unsound, those people would not stay with us. But what I would say to you is, show me where I got it wrong. Show me a study that where I got wrong, and I will change my position. Uh, you know, science is fluid. It's not a uh, an embarrassment to me if there's a new scientific study that I haven't seen that comes out and says. The question was, how are you going to win over people who think Fauci's a god, pal? Well, I'll tell you she what. She specifically said she didn't want to debate you on this because you know you won't change. She's saying, I'll I'll tell you how what. How do you though, win over? I'll tell you what. He's doing. A good job at being a fucking politician. <laughs> he's avoiding the question. What I'm saying to you, 
nobody has done that. You know, if an A Prasad, when he did his piece, if he showed me uh, science that was valid, I would say I would change my position. If got to read, together, read my, so you know, read my response this, to it. So you say this isn't what you're leading with, but I just have to say, as someone who you know is, is watching your candidacy closely and is aware of the advocacy you've been doing and you know the organization that you um, are involved with, it's hard for me to believe this won't be an important part of how you govern. So I think that's the most important piece for people to get. Who you have to accept, there are going to be people like me who just don't agree with you on this. Um, you you know certainly understand that there are many who do think that the vaccines that we have are more beneficial than harmful. That you know got their kids vaccinated and are gr- happy for that decision. Um, so how is this going to impact the way that you govern or does it not at all? I mean, I, I'm going to govern according to, you know, what evidence based medicine. Uh, that's, you know, that's so wait, let me let me give a specific question. If there's another pandemic in the last pandemic, uh, former President Trump, something we gave him a lot of credit for. He launched Operation Warp Speed. Um, they had a whole of government approach. They used the mRNA technology that was developed using you know U.S. taxpayer dollars to get a vaccine out to the population as quickly as possible. How would your approach have differed? My approach would have been a science-based approach. Which means what? Which means uh, and a, and a medicine-based approach, the approach that has been used for, you know, for, and approved for decades. You look first at therapeutics that are off the shelf, and you look at the efficacy at, of those. I mean, what I would have done if I was in power then, I would have created an information grid because now we have this internet that is supposed to benefit us and has become instead an instrument for, you know, um, totalitarian control. But let's use it for something good. Let's link all 15 million science doctors, frontline physicians all over the world and find out what they're doing to treat this new respiratory virus and find out what they're saying is working and not working and then test that, may turn it into instantaneously into protocols and recommendations for other scientists. So would a vaccine did, development did, be part of that? Well, you know, I don't think the vaccine worked. I think, you know, if you think it worked then try to explain to me why the countries that were unvaccinated did much better than our-, than well, our Many our, of those countries, because there are a lot of different factors well, in various countries. So a lot of right. those countries that you pointed out before- we, we have, hold on, hold we on. have the highest death rate well, in, in the world by far? I think there are a lot of factors that may go into that. Yeah. One of them is Wrong. the fact that we China are does. disproportionately obese as a society. We have the negative health outcomes that we've been that? talking about. We don't go outside as much as countries say it's in Africa. I mean, we have, correct. there are a lot of different factors that may play into that. But I will, I will say, did the vaccines work in the way they were initially promised to prevent spread? No, I don't think so, especially once you got to later variants. Uh, the argument to say that we have more deaths because of the vaccine People, it's not because of the vaccine. It's fucking obesity, as she said. She's actually it nailed was fucking it. New it York excellent. is what it was. Oh, yeah, because of uh, Cuomo fucking well, everything up. Well, no, just New York is designed for a disease to spread. Uh, it's yeah. all tunnels, elevators, mm-hmm. underground, crowded, close proximity. Yeah. It's not like LA where it's more spread out. Like New York, yeah. New York is the last place you want to be in a viral outbreak. Mm, this is true. This is very true, but she may, we she have may a lot of data that shows that in terms of reducing severe hospitalization and death, the vaccines were really important. And maybe there was a cost benefit analysis. I want to see that data. I know that's what the industry there's, says. There is lots of data, and not just from here, oh. from around the world, that shows the vaccine doses, and not just our vaccines, but ones that were created all around the world, reduce severe hospitalization and death. So in that way, yes, I do very much believe that they will. Let me tell you something. I, what I believe you're doing now is you're parroting what the public health agencies have been saying, but they do not have a scientific basis for that. And I have another book out that you should look at called Died Suddenly that goes through all the Johns Hopkins data, which is the you know, death. That suddenly is a legitimate conspiracy that's like proven wrong. They made yeah, a documentary that, that's, as well. That's touted by a lot of these sort of COVID skeptics. And this is this is where I, I struggle because like I Does he know that there's a of... Republican primary going on right now? I have no idea. And like Republicans like, like, are gonna like him more than Democrats? Yeah, they will. Um but I'm kind of on her side where I'm like, well the vaccines were told that it was going to stop the spread. It didn't stop the spread, but it did prevent hospitalizations and whatnot. There, there are side effects, but there are side effects in every fucking medicine and vaccine. Like, there are so many factors to it that just aren't spoken about because it's, I mean, as we've said so many fucking times, it's just people wanting to be vindicated in the opinions that they got fed initially. And that's all it is. You get fed a fucking thing initially and your cognitive dissonance refuses to accept that you could be fed wrong information so you just try and look for things that vindicate exactly what you were told and that's the problem more than anything else. that everybody used mm. and shows exactly what happened when the vaccine first of all the even the the, the vaccine the case if i saw this was just vaccines like who cares about any of that we're very excited to be joined by Robert Francis Kennedy Jr. He is a author, an activist, and a presidential candidate, sir. Thanks okay. so much for joining us. We really this appreciate is it. Thanks for having me. Why That's should you be president? So one of our goals here, sir, is uh, we know you've been doing quite a bit of interviews. We would like to treat you seriously as a presidential candidate. We want to get to some things which we haven't seen you touch on before. We know some of the issues that animate you the most. We'll leave those to the side. We want to make sure that we get as much ground as possible. So our first question is actually a very basic one. Uh, why do you think that you should be president? 
Well, I, you know, I'm running because I'm disturbed about the direction our country is going in, not only our country, but our, my political party. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it really culminated during the, um, my unease. With they want to pick the Democratic Party back to white supremacy. <laughs> What's happening culminated during the okay. pandemic, all of this kind of uh, <laughs> almost like an orchestrated assault on the Bill of Rights that suddenly it was okay to censor. I can't, I can't stop looking at this fucking skinny tie he's got on. I hate it so much. Her speech, uh, particularly criticism of the government, which has always been the purview of American citizenship. And then they went after her freedom of worship. They closed every church in our country for a year with no scientific citation. Sorry for pausing again. I just want to point out. That the book they have behind him is a Matt Taibbi book with a ripped cover. <laughs> like, great set design there, guys. You couldn't get the book that didn't have a ripped cover. You can't just, like, buy a new one if you just need a new... Like, they probably can buy... He'll probably just print you off the cover and send you a new cover. No democratic process, no notice and comment rulemaking. They went after jury trials so that we can no longer, which are guaranteed by the Seventh Amendment, in any case or controversy exceeding $25, Americans are entitled to jury trials if somebody harms you, but suddenly... You couldn't sue vaccine companies or pharmaceutical companies or any kind of medical provider, mm -hmm. no matter how negligent they were, no matter how reckless their conduct, no matter how grievous. I agree with their injury, uh, They went after property rights. They closed uh, there's a Fifth Amendment right to uh, due process and just compensation. They closed 3.3 million businesses with no due process, no just compensation. Uh, they went after the Fourth Amendment, you know, the, the Fourth Amendment right to uh, or prohibition on uh, warrantless searches and seizures was just left by the wayside as we encountered all of these kind of intrusive government mandates where you couldn't essentially leave your home without showing your med private medical records, etc. He did not just Fourth Amendment COVID, bro. We're losing our Fourth Amendment Wait, right if, because is that you need COVID seizure? passports? The yes! Yeah, Fourth no, Amendment the COVID, the COVID is like no-knock raids, dude. What are you yeah, talking yeah. about? The COVID passports is a completely different issue where it's over... Is that a it, fucking... It, is this something that it, the fucking... Covidiots say, like, where they talk about vaccine pass. Where was the vaccine passport? Uh, you need one to leave the country. Yeah, you need normally. one to get in. You need one to get you in. You need them to leave. Too. Yeah, you certainly. But most yeah. countries, you're going to have to be vaccine checked at the door. Or not yeah. even vaccine checked. They're going to COVID check you out because it's a long pandemic, you know? Yeah, yeah. But well, yeah. it's over now. Which means America should remove those. But that's not that's not something that's weird. Is that you're required to be vaccinated to fucking enter a country? Have you gone through yeah. customs before, dude? But also, it's it was a a vaccine to for COVID, and now that it's over, there shouldn't need be a need to be vaccinated for COVID to get into the United States. That's just absurd. Is it still going on? I'm pretty sure that's still a thing, yeah. I mean, didn't they declare COVID over? over. That's why Title I've, 42 I've, ended. I technically, uh, to be fair, Title I have not checked. 42 expired because of COVID. No, right I know. Here. And I technically, so. ha I haven't checked whether you still need. You don't need a, no, you don't need a vaccine. Vaccinated? You can well, walk I, right in. I haven't checked. I haven't checked. Walk right but... in. Walk over the border, claim asylum. Not you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not talking about Because you'll definitely get deported if you try to do that. But <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about me, for example, flying to America. For me to get in, I would need to be vaccinated for COVID. And Your that... government no, embassy this will is tell you the this. United States. No, no, no. Your government embassy will tell you what you need to enter right. the United States. Remember, yeah, because yeah. I pulled that up for like what country? Uganda. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, something like that. I, I'd have yeah. to check. I, yeah. I, I'd, I'd have that's to where, check. That's where that's where it will tell sure. you. Yeah, and you know, I personally was subject to a lot of the censorship, but more disturbing, mothers who had injured children, uh, people who who said they suffered or felt that they had suffered injuries from the vaccines, doctors who mm -hmm. wanted to provide medical advice on early treatments were all banished from the internet, and uh, you know, it started becoming a country that I didn't recognize. My own political party was at the forefront of that, the spear tip of those moves, and our party suddenly became the party of censorship, the party of pharma pharmaceutical companies, the party of fear, and uh, and now the party of war. So let me, let me ask you a little bit about that, because um, we both watched a lot of interviews of you, and um, you know both on a general interest, but also to prepare for, for this interview and sitting down with you. And I think some of the key issues that you tend to focus on are um, COVID, uh, the Ukraine war, and censorship. Those are all issues where you seem to be in basic agreement with the former president, Donald Trump. So I'd love for you to lay out what do you see as some of the most critical differences you have with the former president? Well, I have a lot of not only issues, differences, but stylistic differences. See, I'm a Trotskyist. <laughs> I think my approach to people and politics is very different. Um, I'd say, you know, in terms of the issues, uh, probably the biggest departure is on the environment. 
Um, and in fact, you know, my first encounter with Donald Trump is that I, I sued him twice you know, in the years before he was president um, to block uh, his construction of golf courses, two golf courses, which I successfully did in the New York City watershed. But on all of the you know, environmental issues, I think my, um, my worldview is very different than the president's. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to talk about any of the other issues. Mm. What about the current president? So when you obviously were running against an incumbent president, I was thinking a little bit about your father. He decided to run in 1968. He said he wanted to save the party from LBJ, from the chaos of Vietnam. You're running against an incumbent president as well. Is there a similarity there? Like, what, what do you want to save America from Joe Biden from? What exactly? Well, uh, you know, the, the forever wars, mm -hmm. you know, which which was uh, really a, kind of a Republican issue. And it's it's flipped now. You know, there are many, I think there are many more Republicans who are skeptical about this war. Um, we should be making peace around the world. We should be projecting economic power rather than military power the same way that the Chinese do. And, um, you know, and... Okay, I'm just going to pause there for a second and be right back. Fucking hell. The forever wars are over. Technically. The global war on terror ended under Joe Biden. That was the forever war. Said we, you know, the war is now our major industry. And weapons are one of our largest exports, and that's you it know sounds that's like the, Russell Brand. That's the inverse of everything that America was supposed to represent to the world. My uncle, President Kennedy, said when he was asked by one of his best friends, one of his two best friends, Ben Bradley, who was the publisher of the Washington Post, asked him what he wanted on his gravestone, and he said he kept the peace. Hmm. Um, and and when he when Bradley asked him about that, he said he said he felt that the principal job of a president was to keep the country out of war. My uncle had been in World War II. He lost his brother in World War II. His father was you know, adamantly against had opposed World War One. Uh, as ambassador to England, he had tried to keep the country out of war. This is before we knew about Hitler's atrocities. You know, the, the final solution didn't begin until '43. Um, but um, my, you know, my grandfather believed that the best strategy for the United States. Th there's a famous historian called Paul Kennedy, who's no relationship to me. He's a Yale historian. He did this very influential book on the declines of empires, and he went through all of the empires in the last 500 years, and shows that each one of them destroyed itself, cannibalized itself by overextending its military abroad. And my grandfather knew that. My grandfather, nine kids, he could not bear, he could not conceive of a, an issue that would be worth the sacrifice of his child. You know, my own son fought in the, in the uh, Ukraine war, in the Kharkiv offensive. He just found his son is fighting in Ukraine. Interesting. That's wild. That is crazy. He, he joined, he joined that. without telling us, he went over to Ukraine, joined the Foreign Legion, and he uh, fought as a machine gunner for a special forces unit. But I can't conceive the, uh, you know, the the grief that I would feel if I lost my son in that conflict. And there are 300,000 Ukrainian parents who have lost their children and maybe as many as uh, 70 or 80,000 Russian parents, which is something that I don't think we should be happy about, um, that we should be celebrating. And the war is bad for us from a geopolitical standpoint. We shouldn't be. Who? The only people celebrating killing children is Russia. They bombed a kindergarten day one. Did you see the um the church that they bombed that clearly had kids written on the front of it in Russian that mm -hmm. they blatantly ignored then when they captured the city erased and then built a fucking wall around it to erase the fact that they bombed kids maybe we should talk about that but it was Russia and China together specifically it's uh, you know, directed at we, the sky. We, we went to that war for the right reasons, out of compassion for the, you know, the best of American right. uh, character and virtues, mm -hmm. and compassion for the Ukrainian people who were victimized by an illegal and brutal war invasion of the Russians. Uh, but it, it ceased at some point being a humanitarian mission, and it became a an agenda, a geopolitical agenda to exhaust Russia, to um, to do regime change with Vladimir Putin, which is the opposite of humanitarian yeah. impulse. Sure. And they've been out, out front. Shut the fuck up. Shut Shut the fuck up. He said, yeah, and. Ugh. He also said regime change. Fuck off. Yes, and. Regime, regime change. Yes, and. <laughs> Who cares? I mean... Who gives a fuck? Fuck Putin. And also, he wouldn't be a fucking issue if he just didn't invade. It's very fucking simple. Shut the fuck up. Are we done with this? I don't want to. You know, up front about that. At times, they've admitted that's the goal. Yeah. One, one quibble with you. I just, I've seen you mention this three hundred thousand um, Ukrainian deaths number a couple of times, and I wasn't able to find. Can you tell us where's that number come from? That was. I forget the name of that. It's the commander of the Ukrainian forces, hmm. um, and it was in his conversation um, with the NATO commander, okay. which was publicized. Because we saw in the leaked documents, happy, it was. I believe like, that's correct. Okay. But I will. I will provide you with that citation. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to see because we looked beforehand and wasn't weren't able to just see that. There were different numbers in the leaked documents. We just want right. to be accurate. Well, let me. You know, I'll get. I'll get you that today. That'd be great. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um. So day one agenda. What Bro, she just asked him for his source, and he replied with, "I don't know." Gotta love it. Day one agenda. Okay, let's hear it, buddy. What are the priorities? 
uh, the priorities on day one will be partnering Julian Assange. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, okay. And Fair enough. No way. No way he left with that, dude. There's also no way that anybody would let that happen. There, there's no fucking way. They've spent way too much time uh, Why not? persecuting him. He's going to die soon anyway. Fuck him. Yeah. Who cares? Well, the actual pathetic thing, if we really, really want to talk about Julian Assange, criticize the Australian government for not protecting its fucking citizens. Mm -hmm. How about we do that? Instead of talking about America pardoning Julian Assange, why doesn't the Australian government step in and be like, hey, fuck off? Like, that's all we need to do. Instead, the Australian government sits on their fucking him. hands. You could, they could. You could render him and tie him to prison. But we would, we would only release him if you promise not to let him go. Yeah, and then once he's here, we can be like... Pfft. Yeah, you could. Like, what are they going to do? It's our citizen. Fuck mm -hmm. you. Right? At the end of the um, day, then, uh, it's, it's just... It's not a fucking argument. Start harassing the Australian government about it if you really fucking care that much. America's government is completely irrelevant at this point in this conversation. Continue. Starting to fix NIH, FDA, CDC, um, you know, get them off of the, of the, you know, their subsistence relationship with the pharmaceutical industry and unraveling that agency capture, putting the right people in that agency who know how to do that. And is that just a matter of different personnel or do you need to have a public option for pharmaceutical companies? Do you need to nationalize the pharmaceutical industry? What does that actually mean? No, like? I don't think that's the right thing. I, I think we need to get pharmaceutical money out of the regulatory agencies. And I yes, nationalize the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical products that they worked on, which they can do today. Mm -hmm. Oh, NIH has devolved from being a uh, from being a research agency that's supposed to be improving American health, and instead it's become an incubator for pharmaceutical products. So they develop you know initial pharmaceutical products in their lab, and then they farm that product out to a university, and they give the universities hundreds. This of is research, and to go through phase this, one and phase two. This is research, and then they bring in a pharmaceutical company if the if the drug works, which they almost always do because they can make them look like they work, and then they bring in a pharmaceutical company to do the phase three, which is very very expensive, may cost a billion dollars. And along the way, everybody gets a piece of the patent. So NIH gets a piece of the patent. For example, NIH owns half the Moderna patent. And, you know, there's been billions and billions of dollars, maybe a hundred billion uh, so far on that platform, on that mRNA platform. Okay. So he says vaccines is not a huge part of his platform. Day one agenda was pardon Assange and fucking make sure that all our fucking pharmaceutical research gets defunded. It's defund healthcare. Pardon Assange. Great plan, dude. And then this is profit motive. He's going on. This day one agenda is going to transition to him ranting about the profit motive of big pharma. Okay. Oh, Medicare for all. Let's see what he says on this. As you know, every other developed nation in the world has universal health care. Do you support universal health care through a Medicare for all program or something? Yeah, something? Uh, my, you know, my, uh, my, I, I would say my, my highest ambition would be to have a single payer program, which, you know, with... Ad this is such a cop-out. Okay, Obama. Yeah, this is this literally Obama said this. If I could start at square one, I'd do a single payer system. No shit, dude. But we don't start at square one, so why even say it? And people who want to have private programs can... Literally, this is literally a is like, I agree with you, we should do it, but, you know, we can't do it like that. Go ahead and do that, but to have a single payer program that is available to... Everybody, I don't know how politically realistic that is, but you know, if you ask me, if I were designing the system from the beginning, that's what I would do. Hmm. Um, you're right; the system now is broken. Uh, we can't we take, steal you know, Obama's for healthcare Obamacare talking point We're behind, like Costa Rica and Cuba in terms of why are they so? We have the highest level of crime. against saying, uh, "I'll get money out of politics." Why, why are they so against saying this? Do you know how easily you could win if you're just like, "I will dedicate all of my efforts to removing lobbying." That so, so much support. Chronic disease in the world of any country, you know, that means neurological diseases, autoimmune diseases, um, uh, 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 allergic diseases like peanut allergies, food allergies, uh, eczema, anaphylaxis, asthma. And uh, and we we pay more than anybody else. We we also consume, consume more pharmaceutical products. I think we take more, I think we take three to four times as many drugs per capita than Europeans do. Mm -hmm. And they're not making us healthier. The third largest cause of death in this country after cancer and heart attacks is now pharmaceutical drugs. 
oh, Americans are the sickest country in the world. This is the opioid over the sickest generation we've ever had. And we, we spend $4.3 trillion on healthcare every year. 80% of that goes to treating chronic disease. And uh, to me, the, the, the worst, you know, the most alarming metric, when I was a boy, um, 6% of Americans had chronic disease. Today, by 2006, 54%. And, you know, I'm sure it's gone up since then. Obesity. I mean, half our children are debilitated for life from a chronic disease. And, uh, and you know, the, the pharmaceutical industry is making a lot of money on that, selling us the EpiPens, the albuterol inhalers, the anti-seizure medication, uh, the insulin shots and all that. And they're making a killing. They make, you know, half a trillion dollars a year. Uh, but it's not good for our country. And what we need is public health agencies that are actually focused on public health rather than advancing the pharmaceutical paradigm or profits for these pharmaceutical companies. It's interesting to me. I heard you talk a lot about corruption. We were talking here about the profit motive. I was surprised, though. You did the interview with the All In podcast. I knew that you were against nuclear power. So the answer is no, he's not pro-health care. Yeah, pretty much. He didn't it's actually... just big pharma. Oh, he's anti-nuclear energy. Yeah, yeah. Which is going to be the typical fucking talking points about, uh, nuclear disasters, uh, blah, blah, blah. Even though it completely ignores the fact that Chernobyl was Soviet incompetence, uh, Three Mile Island I'm actually not sure about, and then Japan was a natural disaster. Shut the fuck up. Nuclear power is that how we transition from coal to green renewable energies or any other fucking source of energy. It is the cheapest and most efficient fuel we could possibly have. And now that they're producing fusion, it's even more viable. Shut the fuck up. He's paid for by the fossil fuel companies. That's why I bet he nuclear. is. No, serious climate change policy because it's not half the conversation. <laughs> The Davos Group and other. Come on, I skip right to Davos Group. This <laughs> is a perfect. whack job. Um, totalitarian elements in our society have you have used as a pretext for clamping down totalitarian controls. But isn't that even more of a justification if you if you think that isn't that even more of a justification for you to argue in favor of an approach that doesn't result in the yeah, totalitarianism that you're fearful of? Exactly. Fuck that. So, and I've always said I've always been cautious about leaning on scientific evidence for climate because the reason is it's not persuasive to people who don't want to believe it. Mm. I work for commercial. Oh, that is a good point that if you going if you're going for science first it's not going to matter because um, it's not going to move these people. You, you have to understand science anyway to like have that approach. No, May, just in, incentivize it. That's all you have to do. Fishermen on the Hudson River for most of my career and all across the country, they love the environment. Republicans, most Republicans love the environment. If you tell them, yeah, they you, love making money off of it with those <laughs> fucking deposits. What this an is, insane statement, dude. The, Tim Pool will fucking tell you the same thing that the Republicans care more about the environment. Of course he will because he's a conservative. But don't yeah. worry, all but his, if we, all his but if we orbiters pass, call him a fence We care about the environment, but don't we dare pass acts to protect it. No, that no, would no. be tyranny. That would be ridiculous. No, don't just, don't just look at nuclear energy. No, no, no. It's been half the conversation talking about, about how it's <laughs> shit. <laughs> and also how windmills kill birds. Uh -huh. They're all in. It should not be a divisive issue. The environment should not be a divisive issue. I understand what you're saying. But it's hard to persuade people that lines on a graph that say that sometime in the future you're going to suffer. Take my word for it. Right. And I want you to give up these things in your life. It's just all it's going to do is polarize people more. Individual choice and change is not going to solve the climate crisis. Bro, we solved acid rain overnight. You want to know how we did it? We told companies, you can't produce this certain amount of fucking emissions. Emission limiters, right? We've done this before. We're, we've kind of done it on cars a little bit too, but not enough. So they limit the pollutions that are coming off these things. But what they do is they make it so you can sell off your extra credits. So companies that could afford to just convert like could then own. sell their credits to companies mm -hmm. that can't afford not to pollute. That's what Tesla does with uh, GM and Ford. Oh, do they? Yeah, that's yeah, what Tesla does. It's a solid strategy. Mm -hmm. It's how, it's why they're worth so much. Yeah. Well, what the argument I've always made is that all of the things that we need to do. It was also science based. The scientists came up with that. Whether you believe in climate change or not, you don't have to. And I'm not going to argue with you if you don't believe in it. But all the things we need to do to avert climate change, we ought to be doing anyway to avert war. You know, the oil wars have cost us $8 trillion since, uh, since 2002. The, um, the, the poisoning of every fish. In I thought we made money off of those wars. Isn't that always the point that they're wars for profit? Yeah, but like uh, weapon sales and stuff, right? But but my oil. What what is it? Are we we're looking. We need to compare the def. What are we comparing the budget loss to gain here? How much should we gain from weapons? How much should we gain from 
I mean, if you if you have a problem with that, maybe we should care about Trump giving fucking Kirkuk to Iran. Mm, yeah. Not that we were making money off of that, but no, but you know, it's fucking over your country. allies. Very yeah, it's cool. fucking over Iraq. It's fucking over Kurdistan, really, more than Iraq. Absolutely. The asthma attacks, the ozone in particular, the, the, ster the sterilizing of the lakes on the Appalachian. These are all things that everybody's concerned about. And those are the things that I think we can get a consensus on rather than, and we're not going to get a consensus on climate. And climate using, a, you know, the, the approach that we've been using up until now has stalled. And if you, you know, the solutions, which are to get everybody to sign treaties and then have um, unenforceable uh, milestones that they have to meet that nobody can enforce that everybody can lie about and that, uh, that, that that become an excuse for clamping down totalitarian controls on people are things that are going to get a lot of pushback. But, you know, if you talk to people about pollution and let's switch to something that's more efficient, that's going to provide jobs, that's going to give us a new industry and economic growth, that's something that I think, you know, we can unite people on rather than divide our fear. Uh, we've only got about 10 minutes left before we got to get out of here. One something we really want to talk about is the border, the current uh, situation down there. How would you handle the current border situation? Would you preserve and keep the remain in Mexico policy? What does an ideal asylum and immigration system look like under your presidency? Um, well, the, first of all, I'm going down to the border in the next couple of weeks, to, you know, to talk to the, every the stakeholders, the border patrol, the people on both sides of the border. And, um, and try to better understand it and better own my policies to develop a solution that is going to talk to migrants. We cannot have people coming over, millions or hundreds of thousands of people coming over illegally. It's not good for. He didn't say it that. was 20,000, wasn't it? He didn't what was say the number? That. What? He said both sides of the border. But yes. how, how many? He how didn't many say migrants. Border? He no, said he's going to go true. talk to both sides of the border, stakeholders so and the border cartel. patrol. He said stakeholders, <laughs> stakeholders and border patrol. Um, he also said. Uh, what did you just say? Well, um, every the stakeholders, the border patrol, the people on both sides of the border, and um, and try to better understand it and better own my policies to develop a solution that, first of all, number one, makes the border impervious. We cannot have people coming over. Oh, uh, that's right. No, 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 I remember. He said numbers. He said hun hundreds of thousands or millions coming over. What was the peak again? 10,000? 10, 11,000? Something like that? Yeah, but millions do come over every year. On yeah, but it doesn't match births. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's not even a, it's not even a relevant point. You just... Make the border impenetrable. Mm. Good luck with that. That's pretty big crime. Yeah, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. That's how I mean. Honestly, wouldn't it be cool if they actually did that and America finally got sanctioned for something? Mm. Yeah, it would be cool actually. It's not good for our country. It's a humanitarian crisis on the border, and we need to end that. There are ways I know of doing it. I've heard many, many. Yeah, open it up. Different ways, but I don't know myself. I mean, I know that Israel hmm. has not a wall, but it has. Uh... No, 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 no. We are not turning to Israel to defend our border. Jesus fucking Christ. Let's see, we're going to use the Israeli strategy to defend Mexicans from getting into our country. Dude. Well, they already want the IDF to come train cops. I know, but why bro, not get the IDF to do Palestinian style murders on the border? <laughs> we're gonna fucking sh have snipers shooting children through the if they get too close to the defense and journalists and medics and medics, yes. Uh, he has fencing systems, on, uh, and they have the same issue that we do with African immigration, and they've been able to stop it and stop the humanitarian crisis. Um, we need to look at this as a humanitarian. He's talking about Israel's African immigration, right? So the Ethiopian Jews, right? Yeah. You know, Israel fucking forced sterilization on those people. I did not, but it does not surprise me. It was temporary, I think. It was like uh, mm -hmm. birth control shots for the, they forced it on the women. Okay. So they couldn't have like anchor babies, basically. Yep. So uh, really fucking, it's like the whole like uterus taker type stuff. Like yeah. that type of stuff is going on. It's really fucked up policy, what they did it's to the black Jews. Definitely not the some Nazi Jews. shit. The Ethiopian Jews, however you want to say it. Mm-hmm. In crisis. And we also need to be honest about the U.S. involvement in the policies that created these huge migrations of people. The, the decades of, uh, of austerity programs that we've been imposing in Central America, of, of, um, of wars, of uh, supporting dictators and oppressive regimes, of, of supporting genocides, of, of funding death squads in those countries, of trade agreements that, had, uh, that were terribly imbalanced mm. that have created this migration. Okay, death squads, yes. Totally fun death squads, but I want to know what genocides. Yeah. No, sure. There's probably there probably is one in recent history that of we've supported. There is. Um maybe Myanmar? Mm, possibly. 
So we might have sold, we might have given weapons to that government. We might have given something, some sort of aid. Because we definitely give money to Myanmar. We do do mm. that. We do buy influence there. So I guess we could say that we supported that genocide. So, uh, genocide of the Palestinians. Yeah. Um, that's that's technically a genocide. Um, yeah. I mean, there are definitely, it's an ethnic cleansing. So that's and definitely. Israel's one. the biggest partner, isn't it? Yeah, but he's not going to criticize that. Of course not. That would be you making an actual point. The one country in Central America that we've never invaded is Costa Rica. And you don't see Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a great country. He's probably bringing it up because he has property there. Costa Rica, Costa Rica is being ruined by white people right now. They're coming in, buying these huge mansions, you know. And it's yeah. great for the Costa Rican government. But Costa Rica is an amazing country. It's like considered one of the best countries to retire to if you're an American. Yeah. yeah. The Rican immigrants flooding to the border in the kind of numbers that we're seeing other people. Costa Rica today is the wealthiest country per capita in Central America. It's the only country that we have not tampered with. Mm. And all of these other countries, we funded these wars and death squads and everything else, and we need to change our policies. Venezuela is one of the biggest countries pushing people over right now. Would you there. commit to lifting sanctions on Cuba and Venezuela? I mean, Venezuela is a source of a lot of money. Yes, Crystal. Yes. It's too bad that you're asking it to somebody who has marbles for bringing. I would not. I would not have sanctions against Cuba or Venezuela. Hmm. Good. I, you know, I think we ought to be encouraging those countries and not bullying them. And, uh, I, you know, I think I, 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 people need to be able to choose their own governments. If they're if they're killing people, if they're committing genocide, then I think we should be doing sanctions. If they're doing something that threatens the United States, we should do that. But otherwise, we should try to work with these countries and de-escalate tensions and be a good neighbor and a good leader and not a bully. People all around the world want American leadership. They don't want bullying and they know the difference. So I also want to ask you about abortion uh, very quickly. Would you codify Roe versus Wade? What is your view on abortion in terms of national policy? Should you become president? I mean, listen, there's nobody that's fought harder in this country. Do we I care about this? For medical freedom. Sure. And, you know, I, I think every abortion is a tragedy. Well, this is the number one key lynch issue. Like the abortion is what made people come to vote Democrat this last uh, Mid winter. And most of the people who have experienced abortion feel that way. Um, and we don't need to compound that by bringing in government and telling people what to do with their bodies. I just think that's, you know, that, that there's no good option, but the only option we have is to let the woman make that choice. So you codify Roe versus Wade, go beyond that potentially? Uh, I don't know if you can codify it, but, you know, yeah, I think people ought to have. Would you encourage the Senate and the House to pass that law? Like, what is the ideal yeah, I, I think, framework? I mean, my okay, Joe Biden. Now we're stealing Joe Biden's policy on Roe v. Wade. You copped out and gave an Obama fucking policy, and now you're doing Joe Biden? Okay. If you people yeah. should have their a right, and government should not be interfering. Okay. So let me ask you about vaccines. This is an area where you and I have um, significant differences. And, you know, just to level with you on this. Enough. A lot of what you say really Enough. I just think no. the final, I know you got to get out of here. So, I mean, the final one is, you know, the idea is you're sitting here for your entire career. One of the things that we have fought a lot about on this show against is corruption and also the idea of political dynasties. So with you, with the famous last name, your father and your uncle, literal American heroes and people that we think about in terms of uh, central to our history. Do you think we should have royal dynasties in politics as somebody's last name? Uh, I don't think we should have royal di dynasties in politics. I don't think we do, but we clearly have you know, clearly name recognition and, you know, the other things that... Um, you know, give advantage to people whose uh, families have already been in politics, who have infrastructure, who have name recognition, who have a, a trust that goes with that name, um, have have an advantage. And I don't know how, you know, whether that's always something that you want to get rid of. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would acknowledge that that's a truth. And um, my final question for you is, you know, do you plan to support whoever the Democratic nominee is? And do you have any intention of running third party if you're um, running the Democratic primary? I primary plan primary. on winning the Democratic primary. Okay, yeah, but, Democratic but nomination. you know, they're they're rigging things. They're not going to allow debates. It's going to make it very difficult for you. So if, if something happens and you don't succeed. Did she, just, uh, did she just say they're rigging it? She's saying they're rigging it and they're not going to let him debate Joe Biden. Whoa. You're not going to. Are they going to fucking crazy? The circus isn't coming to town. <laughs> We're not going to entertain nonsense. Oh, that would be such a disaster of a debate. Bro, I mean, there's uh, why doesn't he go? You can have your own debate with the other loony bin who believes in rocks or something. I don't know anything about her. I just know that the Bernie bros kind of like her. I do not have a plan B. No plan B. No plan. And do you plan to endorse if Joe Biden is the nominee or Marianne Williams? Do you plan to endorse the individual? No, I doubt if I would endorse anybody who's supporting the war. Hmm. I think that's what my, um, you know, so I, you could I, endorse Trump then. What law? Uh, I, I don't see that happening. You would never endorse President Trump. I, I don't. I think we have so many differences in style and approach that um, that I. He's a Trotskyist. Up there. All right. Well, sir, we appreciate your time. <laughs> thank you. you, know, you, you get out of here. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Thank yeah, you. My pleasure. Right. Absolutely. Hey guys, ready or not? Psychopath. Why did I don't understand why he doesn't run? 
Republican. Republican. That's mm. th- there's a Republican primary, and honestly, honestly, dude, with he's he's fringe enough that he would work good over there. He's gonna counter yeah, the mainstream positions over there. He's gonna seem mm-hmm. like he's gonna seem like fresh new talent. Did you see Arnold Schwarzenegger criticizing this? Where he's no. like, it's he says that he's talking about Trump how. Trump can maybe win the primary, but he can't win the election. And uh, mm. Schwarzenegger is a huge Republican. He destroyed California mm-hmm. with Republican mm-hmm. policies, right? Yeah. And he's like talking about how it's it's very sad that they couldn't come up with any new talent. He would do very well in the Republican. Thing. He's not. He's not from this country. He wasn't born no, here. Uh, no, no, no. RFK. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. RFK, of course. Yeah, yeah, he would do excellent in the Republicans because they're all nutbags and believe the same. He doesn't he actually. Does. He doesn't actually want any power or anything like that. He's he no, doesn't he want to lock him. He would get locked in like Trump did because Trump wanted just to get like money because this was TV show yeah, yeah. is failing. Yeah, I I swear Trump got dared to do it one day and he just like fuck it and he got there and he's like shit. Well, people say that it's the day that he decided he was going to do it for real was when Obama made fun of him. Yeah. I wouldn't that's, be surprised. He looked very say. salty. He looked very salty. Okay. Well, I think next time we'll listen to the other lady who's running against Joe Biden and see what okay. she has to say. 